SQL Power XBRL Forms is accessed through an enterprise web portal that can be integrated with any website. Security is managed by this portal with its built-in user management system, or it can be integrated with most other user management systems as required. The portal provides a wealth of tools to help manage your XBRL implementation. In this instance here, you will see several options that relate to the handling of files with XBRL Forms. You can view previous filings, or use the resubmission options to make a previously filed set of forms available for resubmission in the case that this is required. Multiple parties can collaborate on the same filing depending on the permissions employed. We are going to look at the prepare filing option in more detail. After clicking on prepare filing, we see the upcoming reporting windows that are available to file on. You can see the filing due date, the name for the reporting window, the period end date the filing will cover, and what taxonomy the filing will use. As well, on the left-hand side, there's a column for XBRL Forms. Clicking on the appropriate icon will bring up XBRL Forms for that reporting window. XBRL Forms supports multilingual requirements through the use of labels in the taxonomy. In this case, we have both English and French languages available. Navigation between forms or schedules in XBRL Forms is easy. From the table of contents, we can jump to any schedule. In this case, there are two schedules in this demonstration but the number is virtually limitless. As well, the schedules can be nested in a parent-child relationship. We'll start with assets. From the assets schedule, we can navigate forward to the liability schedule. We can then navigate back to the assets schedule. At any time, we can also go back to the table of contents and jump to any schedule of our choice. When entering data into SQL Power XBRL forms, we have help information that comes from the taxonomy. XBRL Forms is configured to pull help information from either labels or documentation, depending on what's available in the taxonomy. One form of help is the admin guide. The admin guide provides a complete list of elements in the taxonomy by schedule with the help information that is available. On the forms themselves, we can see the same help information, but available for each concept displayed on the schedule. This help information is accessed by floating over the question mark icon for the concept in question. Field types displayed in the forms application are based on substitution groups in the taxonomy to provide formatting. Some types supported include monetary, text, long text, date, and Boolean selection. These field types also provide basic validation, such as preventing the entering of text data into a monetary field. Here you see the error caused by that action. It highlights the field in red, and details can be found by hovering the cursor on the field. XBRL Forms supports formulas. In this case, there is a business rule that the total must be greater than or equal to the foreign currency amount. XBRL Forms validates the entry against the formula in the taxonomy once you leave the cell, highlighting the error read and providing an error message when hovering on the field. I can then correct the error instantly, ensuring a more accurate filing. XBRL Forms utilizes calculation link bases. Here you see that the total cash and cash equivalents is made up of the two items above it. This is calculated based on the calculation link base in the taxonomy. Note that the field is read-only. Fields in XBRL Forms can be configured as read-only if desired. In XBRL Forms, there is an option to upload previous instance documents if one wanted to use it as a starting point to create a filing. It has intuitive browse functionality for selecting the instance document to be imported. When an instance document is uploaded, Rules are applied as to whether the value existing in the form or the value from the imported instance documents wins and is carried over. These rules can be configured. A detailed import report is also provided. At some point, if I wish to restart the filing from scratch, I can simply choose the Clear All Values option. With XBRL Forms, you have the ability to print your filing. Upon clicking the Print Filing option, XBRL Forms combines all the schedules into a single form and then pops up your print dialog so you can choose your print options. You can also download your instance document at any point, opening it or saving it as an XML file. When you are satisfied that your file is complete, you click on the Validate and Submit option. This processes all the information entered in the filing against all assertions and formulas within the taxonomy. The Validation Results page will appear, listing errors and warnings that are found. Errors will prevent you from submitting the filing, as you can see in this case, 
we have an error based on a formula that total assets must equal total liabilities in shareholders' equity. And therefore, the Submit This Filing button is grayed out. Warnings do not prevent the filing from being submitted, but provide information to the filer that might be incorrect. Errors and warnings are set in the taxonomy. The errors and warnings identify which schedule the problem was in, so you can easily navigate there to correct it. I can go back and make the correction, and then again click on the Validate and Submit option. You'll see now that the filing has no errors and can be submitted. XBRL Forms has been tested with several taxonomy, including corporate actions. Here you can see the dividends action. XBRL Forms can be used with any taxonomy. In fact, with a taxonomy in place, XBRL Forms can be up and running within days.